The purpose of this video is to talk to you a little bit about um, your master's degree or finishing up your bachelor's degree and the decision uh, on how to arrange the CPA exam. Okay, so for this purpose, I have this chart that I've shared with students many times, and um, the idea is this. This is this can be thought of as the three things you got to be doing. Obviously, the top one is FGCU, what you're currently doing here at, at the university with your classes. Then uh, in the middle here is the CPA review course that you would have to take. And then finally, at the bottom is when you uh, schedule to take each test. OK, so this is an opinion that I'm going to share with you, but this is uh, based on what I have seen has worked best for me and for many other students as well. OK, the first thing is this. Let's talk about the decision of uh, getting your master's degree. So for purposes of uh, CPA license, the CPA license there are in, in the best place to check the most current rules is the Florida Board of Accountancy. But uh, currently, uh, you must have a, a master's degree, basically, or not necessarily a master's degree, but certain number of graduate credit hours in order to be a CPA in Florida. Now, that doesn't mean that you must have all those requirements, those graduate class requirements to sit for the CPA. OK, so don't mix the two. You can start taking the CPA exam and passing the sections before you've actually had all the educational requirements. So that's a big thing. And here's my suggestion in terms of master's degree. Let me start with that. Once you are done with your bachelor's degree, um, a lot of students ask me, where should I go for a master's degree? And here's my view on it, okay? Unless you have an opportunity to go to a top 10 university nationwide, I mean, something just high end, all right? Uh, unless you get that opportunity, any school that is uh, AACSB certified, okay, who is the accrediting agency, AACSB, any university that has an AACSB um, accreditation is perfect for the master's degree. Now, FS, um, FGCU is AACSB certified. Now, you want to make sure you don't go to one that is not AACSB certified and or um, not certified. The, the correct terminology is uh, accredited. OK, now this is my opinion and the opinion of many people as well. but. I just want to give you um, the caveat. This is this is just my view on. It. Now, if you have an opportunity to go to uh, here in Florida, let's say our Research One institutions, our Research One public institutions is uh, Florida State University and the University of Florida. Okay, so if you have an opportunity to go to uh, FSU. Uh, or UF, and it's not a financial burden, a big financial burden, then that's a good idea. That's not a bad idea. Those are our research one institutions. Otherwise, if it's a financial burden for you, um, then I, you know, in my opinion, FGCU will do exactly the same as an FSU or a UF. And the reason I say that is, in, is because in our field, in the accounting field, we are judged on whether we have the CPA or not. Okay, so that's the big thing. Not necessarily where we got our master's degree from. So keep that in mind. The biggest uh, differentiating factor for accountants is do you have the CPA or not? In other words, have you passed the four sections of the CPA or not? And if you have, that's how you are gonna be judged, not necessarily where you got your master's degree. Now, in other fields, I understand that could be different, but for us, as long as you are going to an AACSB certified or accredited institution, uh, then you will be fine, okay? Now, another question, or not a question, but sometimes I hear students telling me that they're doing uh, two bachelor's degrees or they're getting one bachelor with a minor in something else um, or things of that nature. In other words, more undergraduate work than would be necessary for just your bachelor's in accounting. And they ask me if, that, if, they, if they think that's a good idea or not. Um, it, it, again, this is my opinion, but I think that unless you have a definite reason employment-wise or something similar 
unless you have an employment reason why you're doing two bachelors or a bachelor's and a minor and something else, unless you are getting paid to do that or there is a necessity at your at your place of employment for that, I don't recommend anybody spending more time at the undergraduate level if you don't have to. Okay, so what I mean by that is, let's say that you have uh, you have five more classes or ten more classes, whatever, to finish your bachelor's degree. But now that you're adding a minor or now that you're adding a second undergraduate bachelor's, you have more classes to do. Well, to me, it makes no sense. Okay, if you're going to do that extra work, you get more bang for your buck. You will get more reward if you apply that effort to towards a graduate degree. So, in other words, why spend more time doing more undergraduate work when you could be spending time doing graduate work, getting a master's degree? And that will be more valued uh, in, on, in the business world than you saying, I have two bachelors. It's very, it's very valuable to have on your resume that you're working on your master's degree, let's say, versus you're working on two bachelors or something like that. So I think there's more value into you applying your energy towards a graduate degree than to uh, doing more uh, bachelors or more undergraduate work. Now, with that said, uh, keep in mind that there might be some reasons why some people might do that, but very limited in, in, in as what I've seen that makes sense. Okay, let's go back to this chart right here. So that's so I just spoke about a couple things. Where do you get your master's degree? Unless you're going to a top 10 institution, in my opinion, FGCU is just the same as FSU or UF in terms of what your goal is. Your goal is to get a CPA exam. Okay. Uh, now, if you get a chance at a top 10, top 10 Ivy League type school, that's different. Okay. There's a lot of benefits. Even if it's very costly, there's a lot of benefits external benefits to going to one of those institutions. A lot of the uh, children of the people that make decisions in this country go to those schools. So it is to your benefit if you want to get the most out of networking to go to one of those top 10 universities. We also talked about the value of uh, starting your graduate level work as soon as possible as opposed to spending time on two bachelors or whatever. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to do here is discuss how you should be thinking about organizing your next semesters for purposes of the CPA exam. Okay, so in this diagram right here, I have this listed as the last semester for your bachelor's. So whatever that that might be, let's 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 uh let's put some dates here. Let's say that I'm going to finish my bas my bachelor's. I'm sorry, in the fall, in the fall of X1, whatever that year might be. OK, so when I finish my bachelor's degree, I can start technically in the spring. This will be the spring of X2. I could start the master's degree. OK, so one thing before I go there is if on the last semester in your bachelor's, you're only taking a few classes, maybe one, two or three you might be able to take a master's degree level course already that semester. We have an exception here at FGCU, so you might want to find out about that. I mean, if you have a full load of classes, that's not an option. You just wait for the spring X2 to start taking the master's class. But if for some reason you have a slow semester in your last semester, I would encourage you to start taking master's level courses. All right. So in, let's, 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 uh, let's continue with this example here. Somebody finished their bachelor's. Uh, at the end of fall, so in December. So then in spring, they take one master's level course or two. So let me just make believe that they take tax, okay, at the graduate level. Uh, and maybe they take uh, financial reporting at the graduate level as well. Obviously, this is all graduate, so I don't need to put graduate next to it. Okay. If Let's say you're taking two classes. These are graduate level then naturally that same semester okay and this is the way i think is best that same semester somewhere in the middle of the semester i would sign up for a cpa review course immediately at that moment because here's the logic we right after you finish your bachelor's you will have the most broad based knowledge in accounting Right after that happens and you start working, you start specializing in a particular area. 
And you got to keep in mind that the CPA exam is not a specialized area test. It's a general, broad understanding test. So you are at the best position to start taking that CPA exam very early after you finish your bachelor's degree, because that's when you will have the most broad based knowledge. So let's say that spring, which is January through April is when you take tax and financial reporting at the graduate level. I would immediately sign up for these two CPA review courses and right after that semester ends, sign up to take those parts of the exam. Okay, so let me just give you an example. Let's say I am, uh, I wanna start with the regulations part of the exam, which is the tax part. Okay, so reg. Well, I'll sign up for this one uh, probably February or maybe March of X2. So notice what I'm doing here. I'm taking the class in in that same semester, I'm gonna take the CPA review course for that section. Now you might think it's overwhelming, but I, I don't think so. If anything, I think it makes both things easier. The fact that you're taking the CPA review course will just naturally make the tax course at the graduate level easier for you and then vice versa, okay? And if you decide that reg is gonna be your first part, and I'm just choosing reg as an example, okay? Then you will you will set up the date. Oh, by the way, a uh, little caveat here. I think I think you you have to take business law two first before you can sit for the exam. But or, or business law at the graduate level, I think I'm not sure. So your best bet is to go to the Florida Board of Accounting and check the current regulations, okay? But let's let's just say that this is doable, right? Whatever, however setup you do. If this is the case, uh, then I would set up to take the first part of the CPA exam immediately after the semester ends. So I am thinking May uh, May 1st of X2. In other words, the semester is wrapping up and I'm taking that part of the exam. Or maybe even before, you know, if I feel comfortable enough. But, you know, just kind of do it this way. Um, and then... At the same time, if I wanted to, I would, if I feel comfortable enough, then I start taking the fraud review part and I do that, let's say, um, sometime in April, X2. In other words, I want to I wanna benefit myself from the synergies that are created from taking the CV, CPA review course during the time that I'm taking it in school as well. It makes it easier both ways. So you could easily schedule this one for May 31st of X2 and sit for those two parts and complete and pass those two parts that quickly. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, that sounds crazy, Adrian, because that's just doing so much. And I disagree, okay? When you're taking these two classes, you're doing a lot. And this is nothing more than the similar topics that you're addressing over here so it's not like it's this much more no you're you're fine-tuning some of the things that you've learned you're learning here to be able to sit for that exam and i would not wait a minute longer than this in fact i would even possibly cut this to may 15th or something you know somewhere in the middle of the of may so that very quickly i'm getting rid of that exam and naturally next semester Okay, and, and and by the way, when you do this, you've got to make sure that you're going to dedicate and make this a priority. Dedicate time and make this a priority. And of course, you're going to be tired. See this little baby here? He looks all tired. <laughs> and that's because it's going to be tiring, all right? And, and you want to do this quick. You want to do this. You want to take these four sections quick. The reason so is because you're going to be tired. Okay, and if you wait too long, you're going to be tired for a very long period of time and it's just not sustainable. But if you decide on a six month period, you know, let's just say that this is a six month period or a four month period, something like that, from the start of you deciding you're going to do the CPA to all four sections, six months, maximum, maximum six months, in my opinion, or nine months or whatever, nothing more than that. If you decide that you're going to do this, 
you're going to arrange your life so that you will succeed in passing these four sections. There is absolutely no benefit, in my opinion, from just going in there and saying, I'm going to try to pass them. And I'm just going to, you know, take the classes and then, you know, maybe do a CPA review course or just buy a book. Some people will say, I'll just buy a book and review it. Sorry, folks, it doesn't work that way. You must sign up for a CPA review class. They have the latest information on what's trending on the CPAs. They just have information that is extremely valuable so that you do not waste your time. So please remember that. Okay, so let's say, let's say next semester you take a class in gra at the graduate audit level. And, um, and maybe you take a, an economics graduate level course. Well, voila, there are your four sections. You take that CPA review section for audit, and I would do that if, you know, if this is the summer. Let's make believe that this is the summer. And sometimes summer schedules are a little bit trickier, but let's just, let's, let's just say that audit were available in the summer of X2. Then I would take this CPA review course uh, sometime towards the end of March. I mean, I'm sorry, end of May. Start it. Okay, which means that somewhere in June, maybe 15th, somewhere along that line, you can schedule to present the audit section of the exam. Okay, so uh, I'm not putting, you know, the, the section you're taking right here, but obviously it's naturally if you're doing the reg, then you prepare for the, you, you, know, you sign up for the reg. If you're doing financial reporting, you sign up for financial reporting. If you're doing audit, you would sign up for audit. And if you're taking an economics class, then I would take the BEC section uh, towards the, uh, uh, you know, right after, right after you take the CPA exam, June 15th, or let's say June 16th, just to be nice. <laughs> so in other words, you took this CPA part, you better start on the other CPA review ASAP, the BEC. And I would just set this up for July 1st. And you might think this is a little crazy, but it is not, folks. This is the way to do it. But there are two main things that you have to keep in mind. Your bachelor's is a general knowledge test and the CPA exam is a general knowledge test. The sooner you connect your bachelor's to the CPA exam, the more likely you are to succeed, okay? And then the second thing, which is humongous, and in my opinion, one of the most important things. Let me put a little bracket here. Oops. Bear with me one second here. There we go. Okay, so the most important thing is this. When you decide that you're going to do this, this has to be six months, around six months maximum. I don't care, you know, I don't care how many months they allow you to do this because, uh, because in the, you know, according to the rules, you, you have X amount of months to do all four sections. I would not recommend you using the maximum allotted time. I would just say, I need to do this in around six months max if I can. If you cannot because of constraints of class availability or issues, of course, but if you're going to do this, folks, it requires a lot of effort, a lot of time on your part, and the support, listen to this, the support of those people around you, okay? You need the support of your significant other. You need your support, the support of your family because you're going to tell them, hey, listen, during these next six months, I'm going to be doing the most important thing in my career, okay? This is what's going to allow me to make money for the rest of my life and maximize my potential to make money. I need your support. And that's what you have to say to those around you because you're gonna choose a time frame in which you're gonna do this and you're gonna set this all up and you're gonna post it somewhere in your house so you see the goal here. And when you do that, you're more likely to succeed, but it requires you to get the support of those people around you, okay? If you cannot get the support of those people around you, it's gonna be very hard. And then, if you do get the support of those people around you, if you are able to arrange your life in this fashion, maybe you get some concessions at work where you get a little bit of time off, whatever, whatever it is that you're gonna do, 
you better perform. Okay, you better show these people and you better show yourself, especially yourself, that you're going to be able to do this. Now, my philosophy in life in general is if I'm going to do something, I'm going to go 100% or I'm not going to do it. So same thing goes here, and especially in this, in this conversation that I'm having with you. If you are going to decide to do this, okay, where you're going to get your CPA, you're going to be successful in getting your CPA, then you better go 100% on it and you better block that period of time and go for it. The difference in terms of earnings between somebody that has a CPA and somebody that does not over a lifespan is significant. So I'm not going to throw out a number. There's a whole bunch of numbers out there, statistics as, as to what that difference is. But I'll tell you this, it's significant. And if you've gone this far, you know, you've gotten your bachelor's, you, you understand the general idea of accounting, there's absolutely no reason why you're not going to run those extra miles of the marathon to be able to knock it out completely. Okay? And then at the same time, you're going to complete this and you're going to finish up your master's degree. But that, there's less pressure on that. You can do that slowly after that. So in other words, you have your C, you know, you do these semesters where you, a couple semesters where you're going to do the CPA. And then later on, you just continue on your master's on one or two classes per semester and knock it out and get your, your master's degree as well. Um, I said at the beginning is we are judged by whether we have the CPA or not, right? And that's very true. So as long as you go to any AACSB accredited institution like FGCU, you're on a roll. You're doing well. Okay. Now, sometimes people do this and do not complete their master's degree because they say, okay, I got my CPA and then that's it. I'm done. I'm not going to take any more master's level courses. And that happens. And that's a reality in our industry. But I will say this for that, you know, for that train of thought. Later on, as you progress in your career, there are positions that require a graduate degree and you must have completed it. So if you if you see yourself progressing with a, within a firm or a company, uh, as many times there are requirements for that person to have a graduate degree. And if you simply take a few courses now, get the CPA and let that linger, what ends up happening is that those classes you took a long time ago will no longer be valid for your masters because of they've aged out or they're you know you took them too far too long ago is what any institution will say so i highly encourage you to first of all organize this for the cpa that's the most important thing and then second of all once you've gotten your cpa just keep on trucking keep on doing this so that you finish your master's degree in a year or a year and a half whatever it may be it's only 10 classes it shouldn't be too bad okay uh, so hopefully this helps you, in, uh, in, and let me just recap real quick. Where do you do your master's? Any place AACSB accredited, unless you get an opportunity to go to a top 10 university nationwide where the children of the politicians, where the children of the CEOs are, all that kind of stuff. But otherwise, any Florida institution will do. Uh, if you have an opportunity to go to, to one of our research universities, Research one universities in Florida, like Florida State or UF, and it's not a burden to you, then do it. But if it's a financial burden, if it's a time burden, if it's a family burden, then FGCU is just perfect as an accrediting, accrediting, uh, accredited institution as well. And then the other thing I talked about is don't be spending your time, unless you have a good reason, on more bachelors or more minors. No. Get done with your bachelors and start cranking on masters or graduate level coursework that's more valuable in my opinion and then finally you better set this up so that you succeed and is it going to be tough the answer is yes is it doable the answer is way yes okay it's doable you just got to be able to set up your life accordingly so that you can succeed and you got to you got to get the support from those people around you